Cries of the dead world, calling out in a pain, red skies on a desert, are the blood in the ranger's veins. Only instead of desert, we got snow desert, and what a dessert it was, sweetest dessert ever. I've been waiting for a game like this since Baldur's Gate 2 and Fallout 2. I'm still under huge impression from my playthrough of Wasteland 3. Wasteland 3 is a raw, mature, pure CRPG and it will have a raw, mature review. And I don't care if you like it or not. This review is late, but I don't care about clicks and views to be honest. It's the only thing fair to devs, you guys and myself to release this review after 90 hours spent in the game. What a great fucking game this was, people. I don't know from where to start. I'll tell you what I think in short, then we go to sections. This is my game of the decade winner, time-consuming monster game. It's far better than Divinity Original Sin 2. I like it even more than Witcher 3 in some segments. I'm sorry, Geralt, my Slavic brother. American Rangers won me over. And I was never a fan of Wasteland franchise in general. I liked previous parts, played them, enjoyed, had a good time, a lot of life also, but Wasteland 3 is something else. It perfectly describes human race as a species, all of our flaws, thoughts, so-called moral decisions. Fun effect, bitches spam with nude photoshop pictures on Instagram every day. Naked bitches are allowed to sing and release albums that others write for them. Media and fans call them artists, or even worse, they call them musicians. We watch music now, by the way, instead of listening to it. Famous actors, they act in horrible brainwashing movies of Hollywood. You bet on framed sport events. Politicians' mouths worldwide stink of lies and deceits. Media is brainwashing us every day with million lies and false truths. As Donald would say, fake media. And I've been seeing a lot of comments and reviews how Wasteland 3 is controversial, full of profanity, sexism, violence. For fucking real. So when someone rubs the truth in your face about the world we live in, in a parody, even though it's a video game, then it's controversial and it's profanity. And when you watch lies that are claiming to be moral, naked asses and reality shows, that's allowed, and it's normal, and it's moral, for fucking real again. That's what I think about it in short. It's not a 10 out of 10 CRPG, it's not a 10 out of 10 game. It's 20 out of 10 fucking masterpiece and the next best thing since Baldur's Gate 2. One more comparison how good it is, for example. My wife hates games, she only watched Witcher 3 from time to time when I played, and guess what other games she watched as well? Yeah, imagine, it's Wasteland 3. That says it all, I guess. If you don't like my opinion, I don't give a fuck. Turn video off, watch fake RPGs like estrogen-inducing Horizon Zero Brain, Exodus without Metro, Grid Fail, or other copycats and fake reviews that don't have one connection to RPGs, but somehow media puts them in that genre. And what's even funnier, it gives them good overall scores and reviews. I'm sick of lies, false propaganda and media bullshit. I'll be controversial in this review. Controversial. That's a stupid word without self-meaning that's subjective to everyone's point of view. That's why we have a raw review without cuts and that it's as usual. Those who are not capable of talking in a straight line without million edits should never do them, by the way. My raw self-thinking friends are on me with a raw review made by the rawest game producer in gaming history, Brian Fargo, and in Exile Entertainment. You see the irony in their name there. Think about it. Enter Wasteland 3. Enter Colorado. I said what I think, my soul feels fucking lighter now, and we go straight to sections and rate this game properly as it deserves. First section is the story. Desert Rangers are off from Arizona to Colorado on a mission to acquire supplies in order to survive the winter in Arizona. That's it, your main goal. Sounds simple, but when the game starts unfolding, you'll see how complicated it gets to actually do this while always choosing between wrong and wrong. Good choices, they do not exist in this post-apocalyptic world. 
Colorado is filled with maniacs, cannibals, killers, psychos, and tons of monstrosities. And to top all of that, a dictator named the Patriarch is running things in Colorado. You want his help to save Arizona? Be prepared to do some awful things along the way. This is no classic story, it's pure CRPG story that can go in so many different ways. It all depends on your choices and be sure you'll feel consequences as never before. Humor is mature, raw, fantastic. I can't remember the last time I played something that kept putting smile, anger and sadness on my face more often than Wasteland 3 did. Opening cinematic is great, tons of different endings, radio broadcasts are back and they're better than ever. In your face conversations, they're powerful and very innovative for CRPG genre. I liked those the most. It felt personal, and my only regret is it wasn't happening as often as I would like to see it. But when it did, it was amazing. You had a feeling like you're actually there and talking face to face with those NPCs. I don't want to drag, I can make an entire video about story, and maybe I will. 10 out of 10 masterpiece for the story. Next section is game bugs and optimization. This is the only controversial thing about Wasteland 3 in my book, this section. The game worked fine for me, had two crashes in 90 hours, but huge loading times on SSD, they were killing me. It would take a full minute or two in the last 20 hours to load something, and this is CRPG, and it thrives on quick loads. Bugs were there in small amount, but nothing was game breaking. A lot of times during combat stutterings happen, but thank god it's turn-based CRPG combat, so it was bearable. From low to ultra settings, the game worked fu the same. No big changes. Wasteland 3 didn't glitch once on me. At least that is good. What can I say? Everything will be fixed with patches, I'm 100% sure of it, I'm fully aware of problems that people are facing on consoles, and I'll say only one thing. You are playing CRPG on a console with a gamepad, computer role-playing game. On a console with a gamepad and you complain about performance on a toaster. While a lot of people are having stutterings on 4000 bucks configurations. Chill! Chill and wait for patches, just stop complaining. 90% of AAA titles that are released were in far worse state than Wasteland 3. Bye! Let's all give Wasteland 3 bad scores because of the bad start. You think you know what bugs and performance issues are? I played and finished Pathfinder Kingmaker on its release date after 250 hours with 10,000 bugs, 10 minutes loading screens, corrupted and deleted saves and 1 million glitches. If I want to compare, Wasteland 3 is a godmod state. All in all, reality is 4 out of 10 for performance. Once everything is fixed, it's for sure 10 out of 10 smooth experience. I have both scores in mind for conclusion, so you'll get current final score and potential, potential final score after all the patches and DLCs. Game time is the next section. Already said, on Supreme Jerk it took me 90 hours to finish the game with 42 out of 62 achievements completed. The replay value is amazing, I can easily see myself playing this every year for god knows how many playthroughs. 10 out of 10 for game time. Game difficulty, there's the next section. Another topic that I would dedicate a special feedback video for the devs to watch. That one is on the way and I'll release it soon. You get to play on 4 different difficulties. I'll be very short, played on Supreme Jerk difficulty, hardest available in the game, it was easier than Wasteland 2, perfectly balanced in first 20 hours or so, and then it went downhill. Balancing is required, I felt no real challenge, casual players will enjoy the game or even find it hard, but veteran CRPG players will crave for that additional challenge that is much needed. Current score. 6 out of 10 for difficulty, if they patch and balance, it's gonna be 10 out of 10 for sure. Maps and graphics is the next section. Colorado and only Colorado, as the main world map to play on, tons of locations to explore and visit. Denver, Colorado Springs, Yuma County and Aspen are huge main maps and god knows how many smaller maps to visit. Map is crystal clear and it's easy to navigate. Variety in maps is huge and all of them are covered in snow. Winter dominates in Colorado. 
it adds that special charm to the game that I have no words to explain. One special thing that I would like to talk about is pick and poke pictures for skills, attributes and perks. Those pictures are hilarious. Those who drew them, they should be proud. Armor sets and weapon weapons, they just look amazing. Graphics are superb for CRPG genre. In your face moments are a joy for your eyes. The only complaint I have is the isometric view. It's way too close. Because this game was also meant for consoles. It took some time for me to get used to it. It's good, for example, on 60-inch TV. But man, it pokes my eyes when I'm playing it on my PC. 10 out of 10, all in all. Gameplay. The most important part in the game. Main three questions when I'm rating gameplay for games are Is it immersive? Is it fun? Does time fly while playing? Do you have insomnia because of the game? Yes, yes, and yes are the answers. Wasteland 3 is immersive and it presents the definition of being immersive. It's fun to the bone. Crits are hilariously satisfying. Turn-based combat feels great with million options. And I was sleeping four hours per day on average because of Wasteland 3. It was that good. Now what do you do in this game? It's a turn-based CRPG, so you'll fight a lot, talk a lot, resolve quests with different skill check options, lockpick, disarm alarms, explosives, hex, sneak, steal, manage your ranger team squad, manage your ranger headquarters, upgrade your vehicle, suffer the consequences of the choices you made. Everything you can expect from a CRPG is covered in Wasteland 3, and it was done in a brilliant way. 10 out of 10. Leveling. An itemization. We're doing it in real time. I need to take one sip of my coffee. Leveling and itemization. This, this is a very long section that I'll try to make short as much as I can. Leveling is superb. Every level feels important. Every attribute point, skill point, and perk point are impactful on the game progress. You'll always have something to do and plan ahead. Same applies for creepy dolls. There are, I think, 14 or 16 creepy dolls in the game, and all of them will provide cool passives for your entire squad. Exploration is encouraged for players for sure, and it's very, very rewarding. Itemization, same scenario as with leveling. Amazing amount of items, regular items, status effect items, energy damage, fire damage, unique weapons and armors, consumables, cigarettes, alcohol, meals, and drugs. Injury kits, bleeding kits, health recovery kits. I just can't put a straight number on items in the game because that number is huge. Item inscriptions are a topic too, separate topic. Hilarious inscriptions for all items, especially for junk. Junk never felt better. Details are all over the top and a true CRPG fans will appreciate this the most. 10 out of 10. NPCs and enemies as the next section. Man, I don't know what's better. Companions are cool, they're hilarious. NPCs are also funny and hilarious, from Scottish McDevish to Fish Lips and world's most famous hobo Scotchbo. The parrot Polly was one of a kind pet. I died laughing from Golden Toaster pet. I don't wanna spoil anything else. NPCs and companions, they're phenomenal. You'll get to talk with hundreds of them and all feel unique and special. Enemies, you'll get to talk with them also a lot. You'll fight monsters, worms, drools, robots, sins, scorpitrons, machines, cannibals, psychos, clowns, slavers, bosses, a bloody Santa. Bosses on every corner of the map. It's just epic. Every map has at least one boss on it. All of them are unique and memorable. 10 out of 10. Music and sound is the last section. Wasteland 3 music is clean and spotless and it's pure like the snow. I'm a huge fan of music from the previous century and Wasteland 3's music is old school. When you hear Blood of the Lamb for the first time during combat, you'll stop playing and focus on the song only. That's how great it is. Far better than the original version and I rarely say how reworks of songs are better than originals. Don't make me start about ending songs or false ending song. 
I don't know what's funnier and better. Now, it's not only Blood of the Lamb, it's all other songs as well. Down in the Valley to Pray fits the style of Wasteland like no other song, Monster Mesh. Battle Hymn of the Republic is a masterpiece also, and my favorite, everybody have fun tonight. All songs are pure art. I'm a huge rock and metal fan. Judas Priest and Zeppelin for me since I was a kid. I hate the brainwashing music in the last 20 years. And I put a songs, all the songs from Wasteland 3 on the top of the pedestal in music history. It's very hard for me to hear something good and appreciate it so much as Wasteland 3 music. As far as gaming music goes, Wasteland 3 goes to Valhalla among the gods of gaming music to sit alongside with Dragon Age Origins, with Doom 2016, Doom 1 and 2, Mass Effect 3, Diablo 1, Tristram Team, I guess you know what I'm talking about, and of course Witcher 3 Slavic to the bone music. It's over there with them in Valhalla, that's how good it is. Sound effects were phenomenal, voice acting was superb, and every line of text was voice acted. 10 out of 10. Conclusion. We got 9 sections with current score and potential score for Wasteland 3, because I don't plan to do another review when the game is polished and fixed, and I know it's gonna be. Current score in 9 sections with 80 points would be 8.8 .8 out of 10 for Wasteland 3. Potential score is a no-brain 10 out of 10, 90 points, 9 sections. Or better to say, once everything is patched, balanced and fixed, we are looking at pure perfection. You know I'm very harsh on scores, and I don't give these rates quite often, but Wasteland 3 is really something else. Game of the decade for me. Is it better than Witcher or Divinity Original Sin 2, for example? We are comparing with the best. And the answer is, yes, it's better than Divinity Original Sin 2, for sure. Now, is it better than Witcher 3? It's a hard, hard topic. Hard to compare CRPG with pure RPG. But it's also not fair to compare young game to fully patched and optimized game, like Witcher 3 is. I remember Bugfest and balancing issues in Witcher 3. I do remember them very, very, very well. I remember that still on the release date also. If you people forgot, I didn't. If all three games came out the same day, for example today, in their primary states, Wasteland 3 would easily win by far. Sit around and think before you compare, be fair. Now. Witcher has Geralt as a strong protagonist, best protagonist in gaming history, if you ask me, and it has slight advantage in that, but in all other sections, Wasteland 3 stands shoulder to shoulder with Witcher 3. I'm a huge fan of CRPGs, and for me personally, Wasteland 3 is better. I like humor that Wasteland, Wasteland 3 brings, immersion, choices and consequences, no other game offers those things as well as Wasteland 3 does. I said it in my review for Wasteland 2 that it's the Fallout 3 we never got. Well, I'm saying now for Wasteland 3 that it's the Fallout 4 we never got. Buy and play Wasteland 2, by the way, it's worth every minute and it's great to know the world of Wasteland 2. Before you start Wasteland 3, you'll enjoy Wasteland 3 way much more. Wasteland 3 is in the top 20 games of all time in gaming history. Wasteland 3 is in the top 5 CRPGs ever. Wasteland 3's music is in the top 20 gaming music of all time. Wasteland 3 is the best post-apocalyptic game ever. Wasteland 3 is just a masterpiece. Console players, they should stop whining and wait for patches and be thankful. Thankful to God himself that CRPG like Wasteland 3 is even available on toasters. Now, I don't have anything against consoles. I love playing Metroidvanias and sports games on gamepad. I can't wait to buy, buy PlayStation 5. But I would rather shoot myself than playing Wasteland 3 without mouse and keyboard, even though it looks great on a huge screen. All of you fans of Fallout out there, all of you that anticipate, that are anticipating Baldur's Gate 3, 
are actually waiting for games that were invented by Brian Fargo 25 years ago. Do you really think they can be better without the man who created them? There is no way. Was Chicago Bulls better without Jordan? Was Spartacus the same when Andy Whitfield died after season one? Where is Manchester United now without Sir Alex Ferguson? Million examples, one answer only. You can't do it better than someone that invented it. It's a fact. There is no way. It's not how this world works. Brian Fargo and In Exile Entertainment gave us something special here and I can't wait to see what's next from them. You can agree or disagree with me, like or dislike, it doesn't matter that much to me to be honest. I had amazing time, unsleepless nights and a lot of joy and laugh while playing Wasteland 3. And nothing and no one will ever change that. If Wasteland 3 was 500 bucks, I would pay for it. It's bloody worth it. I could speak for days about Wasteland 3. I'll speak about it in superlatives till the rest of my life. Even if the game remains in the state like this, I do not care. The biggest accomplishment that Wasteland 3 gave me is that blast from the past. I felt like I was 10 years old again, playing Baldur's Gate 1 and Fallout 1 for the very first time. I felt 23 years younger and I'm grateful for that. There would be no Fallout franchise without Wasteland 1. Bethesda would not exist without Fargo. There would be no Dragon Age Origins or Neverwinter Nights without Baldur's Gate. Bioware, or better to say Black Isle, would not exist without Fargo. And we would never get to play that epic masterpiece that Planescape Torment is. Blizzard Entertainment would not exist without Fargo. Those are rumors only, but I wouldn't be surprised if they're true. All of those big companies and huge titles came from Wasteland 1. All of them, Wasteland 1 had huge influence on absolutely every title. I used to play his games, Fargo's games, on Commodore 64 without even knowing who created them. Funny thing, when I go back in time, I play 90% of his games and enjoy them all. Wasteland 3 is just the crown for him and in exile. From the best in the genre, we got the best in the genre, Wasteland 3. Great job, amazing job with Wasteland 3. Ultimate Guide is coming soon and I'll also provide a feedback for devs on Wasteland 3 balancing issues for Supreme Jerk difficulty. I thank you all for watching and I'll be seeing you on the next one.